first off, just to, uh, just to, uh, to get some priority things, uh, many of you guys, uh, if you don't know about it, you haven't been um, paying attention to anything. Uh, you know, Front Street Baptist Church here in town, uh, their bus uh, had a head-on collision with a SUV and a tractor trailer. Uh, the bus uh, driver and his wife died. Uh, six, six people passed away from that. And um, the guy that was, uh, the, the tractor trailer person died and also the person in the SUV. So, you know, we want to keep those in, in, uh, in our prayers. Uh, some people were asking me, there's a memorial service this Wednesday and you got to get me out of the trash can there. Thank you. Uh, this Wednesday at 6.30 at uh, Matt Gray Auditorium. So, um, you know, you guys can decide if you want to, Wednesday, instead of having a Bible study, if you want to go and support that, I think that would be great. Uh, I'm planning to, if I'm, if I'm in town, I should be. And so anyway, um, we want to remember them. And uh, Miss Anita uh, posted... Can we just settle that, like right now, that what? No, yeah. Are, are you fine with that? Just move? Yeah. And that way, everybody yeah. knows it's here. Yeah. We'll go over there and support that. Right. We'll be there at 6.30 at Matt Gray Auditorium is the memorial for uh, those at uh, Front Street Baptist. And uh, you got to fix this ring. It's driving me nuts. I'm sorry. I'm ADD a little bit. <laughs> I used to be ABCD, then I forgot the alphabet. No. <laughs> I'm just... Okay, um, um, two of my friends, Steve and Doris Swain, uh, really good friends of ours, uh, they were in the, the bus too, they are in accidents, so I don't know if you heard on the news, they are in Knoxville in the uh, hospital up there, and so uh, we want to remember them, they're really good, good folks, good friends, and so anyway, and uh, Miss Anita put to, um, put, you know, posted in the uh, paper, uh, from Horizon Church, you know, just uh, encouraging them. It says um, their loving members will be uh, hopefully your comfort, your hope, and your peace. Praise God that they're home from your Horizon Church family. So, um, we hate that it happened, but, you know, maybe, maybe it'll get rid of some of the religious spirits around here. You know, that we can come together and, and build each other up whenever we're going through stuff. So, anyway. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you that uh, you have everything in control. And Lord, that you allow this to happen, that these people can come be home with you. Lord, uh, the Bible says that we should rejoice for them and uh, cry for ourselves because we're stuck here. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Lord, we just lift them up. And, Lord, I pray that uh, through this situation that uh, the church of, of First of Front Street will come together closer, Father. And uh, know that you are the most important thing. Lord, let the other churches in this place speak life into that church. And if there's a need, let us be able to try to help those needs. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Am I in any of the monitors there? Okay. All right. Um, speak life. That's the message we started last week. And if you were at the marriage conference, it went right along with, you know, everything we were doing uh, last week. And so anyway, we're, we're going to go to Speak Life 2. And uh, I just want to, let's just stop a minute and just, so wait on the Lord. Father, thank you. Lord, this is your church. So we have... I ask you to have your way in it. And have your way through us, Father. And Lord, anything that come, comes against you, your word, we just bind that up right now in the 
through the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord rebukes you in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs 18, 20 and 21 says, With the fruit of a man's mouth his stomach will be satisfied. He will be satisfied with the product of his lips. It says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. This is such a simple scripture that a lot of us have heard over and over again, but we don't have the, we just don't have the application, we don't have the complete understanding of it, and we don't have the revelation of what that word means, of what that word says. That, the power of life and death is in the tongue. And that's from God's Word. And we see that God created the entire universe through speaking it into existence. So whenever we speak, we have to realize that it has power. And you can speak life or you can speak death. And a lot of us get in circumstances and situations that we're not happy with because we're not speaking life. I mean, it, 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 we get caught up so easily in it because it's like, well, you know, this is where I'm at, you know, and uh, so I want to complain about it. Well, that's okay. If you want to complain about it, complain to you and yourself. But whenever it comes to speaking life, you have to decide that, that you're going to choose the life that you live and the life that you lead. And God sent Jesus Christ to the cross so that we have, might have what? Life and have it how much? More abundantly. So whenever, whenever we begin to speak the opposite of what God's Word says, we're actually speaking uh, basically what the enemy wants to speak. I don't remember if you guys saw that uh, clip last week about Speak Life when this, this lady was talking about you know, somebody in the church and somebody slapped her in the face with duct tape that said Speak Life. And then the other fellow was working on the table and stuff, same situation, you know, Slapped it on his face and said, speak life. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that many of us would do good to not talk. <laughs> I'm serious. Because you got to understand, and I don't know if you guys can fully get this, but you got to understand this, that if God created heavens and the earth and everything was by the spoken word in existence, that means that these spoken words have power. And then when they are released into the universe, they have a task. And that task will be completed whether it's a good task or a bad task. So whenever people speak about situations, listen... I, I hate that they had the, the, the truck, uh, the bus crash there. But you know what? I rejoice that all of them went home, man. Amen. I mean, they're, they're partying in heaven. They aren't worried about this mess. And that's the hope of the believer, that we don't have to go through that. You know, that we, we get to enjoy not just our life here on earth, but we get to enjoy it in heaven. When Jesus taught us to pray, the perfect prayer, he said, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. So if that's the prayer of Jesus Christ that we should focus on, then that means that we can have heaven here on earth. Amen. You may have to go through some hell to get there. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Jesus did. He descended into the deep, in the depth, came out with the keys of life, of peace, of love. He took every thing that the devil could use against us whenever we went into hell. Amen. Amen. And the, the representation of him bringing the keys out, that means that he's the one that holds the, that, that keeps the door shut or open. And we can live in that joy and that peace and that love and those things and in the power of Christ if we choose 
to do so. Listen, I know people call me all the time, you know, uh, you know, would you pray for this, pray for that? And, and, and I'm, I, don't, I don't mean to be, well, you guys know me. I'm going to say what I feel like I should say regardless of who it offends most times. I mean, I do try to be somewhat prudent from time to time. But what really bothered me, and you guys would think, man, that pastor's whack. But let me tell you what bothered me. When I began to look uh, on Facebook and, and, and look at the comments about uh, this, this fellow Dalton that we're praying for, yes, we are. And every, 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 every person said, we're praying for you. Get well soon. Good luck, Dalton. And you can go back and look at those things. And that's good. That, yeah, we are praying for you. But, but as the believers in Jesus Christ, if we've been given the power of life and death and it's in the tongue, why are we saying we are praying for him? I posted on there, he's healed, will be restored better than before. You know how many likes I got for that? Zero. But it don't matter. Nobody wants to say that he's healed because they're afraid that he may not get healed. Then they look stupid. I'm not afraid of it because I know that God's word says when you speak life, life will be created. Amen. Now, Dalton may be going through some stuff. He may have cancer. He may have, may have tumors. But according to the word of God, when we speak life into it, he needs to be surrounded with people that ain't going to say, poor pitiful Dalton. Poor boy's got cancer. No, no, poor pitiful Dawn. Yeah, he's going through some stuff right now, but let me tell you what, he's got a Savior in Jesus Christ who came that he might have life and life to the full, and he needs to be surrounded with people that speak life into his life. Because we want to see with our natural eyes, and I'm, listen, I understand the hearts of the people. We're praying for him. But what I'm praying for, I am praying for people to come around him that have the power of the tongue, that they're willing to speak life into him and not talk about how poor pitiful and stuff he's going through. Amen. Well, I, I was diagnosed with cancer. It wasn't good. But I listened to tapes that told me that I need to thank God every day that I am already healed by the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. that through his stripes I was healed. And if I was healed, I am healed. And it doesn't matter what your circumstances or your, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The stuff you're going through, the way you feel, has nothing to do, your feelings have nothing to do with the Word of God. You either accept it completely and walk in it, and if you do, what does it say? With the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach will be satisfied. He will be satisfied with what? With the product of his lips. God will produce what you speak. And, and you've got to choose what kind of fruit you want to receive. I, pff, I, I, I just, I can't, I am, I, everybody can get negative from time to time. I understand that. But once you do, get over it, ask God for forgiveness, and then move on. Start speaking life again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. The church has become impotent as a general rule because we don't want to apply the right medicine. We've become ineffective because we, we want to just be the good, nice, you know, everything's wonderful, we love you, we love, yeah, we love you too, but there's also a demon that we're going to have to fight in this place. And God said, no evil weapon formed against us shall prosper. But see, if you don't know what God's Word says, you can't walk in God's Word. That's why in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. You need to understand what Jesus did on the cross and the power that was released. And the, and the life that you can walk in has a lot to do with, uh, number one, you got salvation through Christ that's taken care of when you receive Him. The other thing is, is you have to decide if you're going to receive what He did for you. And then you've got to walk in it. I'm around people all the time and they want to say negative stuff. And they don't really think anything of it. It's just what they're used to doing. It doesn't matter where I'm at. And I'll stop them in there right in the middle of it. And I say, I'll bind that up in the name of Jesus Christ. That's straight from the pit of hell. 
Because if you're not speaking life, you're speaking death, and God has nothing to do with death. God doesn't give us evil. He's not tempted with evil, nor does he tempt anyone with evil. The church could get so set free if we could just get, get beyond sin. That so easily entangles us. Because we have a sin conscience. And I understand that. But whenever you understand what Jesus did, that sin conscience will go away. Now, I'm not saying that you should go act like a nut job because you'll reap nut job when you act nut job. And more. That's exactly right. Y'all know, you guys know the famous last words of a redneck, don't you? Yeah, hey, y'all watch this. You know? You speak life or death. And we get in a situation as the body of Christ, we listen to stuff and we let negative talk and, and, and doom and gloom be spoken in our presence. I just don't do it. I just don't allow it. I just don't want to hear it. Somebody's sick, I'm praying for their healing. I call them healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what the doctors say. It doesn't matter what you see with your eyes. You've got to believe with your heart that Jesus Christ Amen. rose from the dead. He ain't in the grave. If he is in the grave, then maybe you could, you know, not use the power of your words. But God established that in Genesis all the way through Revelation. You do have control over what you, what you speak, how you speak it, when you speak it. You don't believe me? We don't really have phones in the house no more. Remember the phone used to ring? That's, you know, we don't have that. Uh, but you may be in a fight and arguing and just raising Cain and just all up in it. And then the phone would ring and you'd pick up and say, hello. <laughs> or you and your wife is just going at it and then the doorbell rings. <laughs> Hey, good to see you. <laughs> you can't say you don't have control over your tongue. It's, it's a lie from the pit of hell. You do have control. You have a choice. And you can choose to speak life or speak death. You can choose to speak anger or speak love. Yes. James 1 says it pretty easy. says, anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his tongue but deceives himself. Did you put? Yeah. It says a man's religion is in vain. It's worthless. What he's saying is that we need to have control over our life, control over what we speak, and we can have life. This is almost so simple it's complicated. Because every time we get up in the morning, you have a choice of how that day is going to go. That doesn't mean you don't have a choice of what's going to happen, because stuff will happen, trust me. And the more you begin to speak life, the more stuff is going to happen. And you've got to keep speaking it, speaking it, speaking it, speaking it. And not only just speaking it, there's no good in speaking if you don't believe. Our, test get, our faith gets tested on a regular basis. Of what we believe because the enemy wants us to doubt he wants us to doubt that's why many of us don't want to pray for somebody or speak healing into their life i remember uh and, and let me tell you it works over the internet too it works really good had a person that would talk about man i've had this migraine headache it's been going on for three days and i just can't stand it and i don't know what to do and the lord says tell her she's healed right now I said, you're healed right now in Jesus' name. Two minutes later, she says, Pastor Charles, my headache's gone. I said, yeah. She wanted it to be gone. She stood in agreement with me, and we two agreed, and God touched it, and her head was fixed or healed. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, one of my uh, uh, teachers here, uh, Deborah St St Star star person Starczewski 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 see I can't anyway great person we're in class 
And she keeps talking about this headache she has. I said, well, why don't you just keep confessing it some more? And she, if you know her, you know that. It's like, I know. I said, well, in the name of Jesus, that headache's gone. Because what had happened, she kept talking about her headache so much, I started getting one. I mean, I'm, I'm not lying. I mean, I literally did. I began somehow that, you know, kind of guy. And so I said, a headache has to go in Jesus' name. And immediately my headache went away, her headache went away. It's like, it shouldn't surprise you, faith teacher. We have to worship God. John 4 says, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. You cannot wa- worship him in spirit if you don't know the truth. The thing of it is that truth abides in you. Jesus said, I've got to go to send you the Holy Spirit. I've got to send you a comforter. So he left so he could come. And that Holy Spirit is not just a comforter, it's also a compass. Once you receive Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit abides and dwells in you. And you can try to act crazy, and you might for a little bit. But if you're truly saved, that, that, you're going to have a problem with that. You're going to have a struggle and a conflict, and you're not going to be able to walk in both ways. The Lord gave me a, a word, gosh, I don't even remember how many years ago. It was a long time ago. He says, the time is coming when people are going to have to choose what side of the fence they're going to eat on. And was talking about the church. Because what we do as the church, we like the fence. We like the two uh, fields on both sides, the two pastures. So what we'll do is we'll step across one fence and we'll eat off that uh, you know, uh, pasture of, of, of lust and gratification and all that other stuff for a while. And then we're like, uh, because of the Holy Spirit, we're like, oh man, I'm getting sick of this stuff. So then what we do, then we'll jump across over to the other side uh, where there's holiness and righteousness and goodness and we begin to eat on that. We feel great for a long time. But then we get bored. And then we jump back over. And what God is saying is you're going to have to choose which, which field you're going to eat out of. Because we can't be doing this back and forth stuff all the time. God, Jesus said, if you love me, then you'll keep my commandments. And if you look at the commandments of Jesus Christ, uh, he didn't quote the Torah. I mean, he did in certain circumstances, but as far as, as, as what was important, he quoted the grace. We don't see that he said that you must do this, do this, is. But Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. And the commandments that we have, because they ask him, what's the greatest of these commandments? Now, guys, I want you to just erase the law from your mind right now. Because I'm going to break this down so simple that most people can get it. What's the greatest? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. And here's the greatest commandments. Number one, love the Father. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your spirit, with everything you have, love Him. And He said the second one is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws and all the prophecies that have ever been spoken or even written abide in these two. So when Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands, what He said, if you love me, then you love other people. If you love me, then, then love like I love. If you love me, go set the captives free. If you love me, cast the demons out. If you love me, lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. Keep, yeah, and, and, and even in, in the, the love chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Although I may speak with the tongue of men and angels, if I have not love, if I don't do it in love, I'm nothing but just a loud clanging cymbal. I'm just making a lot of noise and it ain't being no benefit. You can even uh, sell all your goods and give them to the poor. What a great thing to do. But if you don't do it in love, it's useless. You can have your body to be burned at the stake. But if you don't do it in love, it's wasteful. 
So whenever he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, you do have control over whatever you say. God is a spirit and you must worship him in spirit and in truth. And when you know the truth, then you can worship him in it. The truth that, that, that anybody can worship is the fact that, hey, God set me free. That I'm not bound under sin anymore in my life. I'm not saying you won't. I'm just saying you're not bound by it. You're bound by grace. You're bound by righteousness once you receive Jesus Christ. So when God looks at your life, he doesn't look at your actions. He looks at your heart. Because whenever he looks at you, when you've received Jesus Christ, he sees a righteous being, not a sinful being. Amen. Otherwise, Jesus died in vain. So when he looks at us through the eyes of the Lord, he sees us as perfect, white, cleansed through the blood of Jesus Christ. The struggle we have is we see our filth, who we are, our attitude, our minds, and everything else, and it prohibits us. It entangles us. That's why when you walk without what we look at as sin, when you walk in the th ways of God, you have peace. And you have comfort, and you have joy. You have all the fruits of the Spirit working in your life. Whenever you walk in that. you got to understand this. All things natural or physical, regardless of whether they're natural or they're physical, they are governed by the Spirit of God. Many of us overlook the natural because I can tell you what is happening in the natural is a picture of the spiritual. I'm just telling you. And this is, this is going to meddle in people's business and stuff. I had a, a, a lady that, uh, I love her, she's a good person, uh, still a friend and everything. Uh, she came to my house and I had this one room, and I bet you y'all got one too. That one room that you pile all that junk in and stuff into that you don't want to go in and you just want to get it out of the way. We had a room and it was, uh, it was I mean, we remodeled a room and everything. It was a beautiful room and everything, but it was piled up with just stuff that needed to be thrown away that just didn't need. And she walked and she saw that. She says, you need to clean that room out. I we'll said, well, why? Because if you've got a cluttered room in your house, there's something cluttered in your life. And until you remove that, you're going to still have struggles and stuff like that. We got it, we got it cleaned up. And, 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 and there is so much power in that to realize. And, and have you, how many of you have seen this show, Hoarders? And I've got to be quiet because I'm going long. Show Hoarders? Man, that almost makes you sick. Mm -hmm. I actually had a friend of mine whose mom was one of those. And it was, anyway, and literally to go into the house, there was a path like this to like. The kitchen, which is there, you can't cook nothing in there because everything's piled up on the stove and stuff like that. A little path to the bathroom, and literally a little path to the bedroom. And it wasn't like the bedroom, it was all packed up and everything like that. There was a spiritual issue going on there. A lot of times we like clutter in our life because it's. We think it's protecting us or we're comfortable with it because that's what we've always had. But I can promise you if there's uh, what you see in the natural has a representation in the spiritual. But here's the great thing about that show. They, they, they have people come in and they start organizing and they actually clean the place up and it's spotless and it's awesome. I mean, most of those houses, I mean, they're really nice houses. And it's amazing that the people that come back in, once they get into that clean environment, most of them will keep it that way. Because it does something not just in the natural, but it does something in the spiritual. It raises their spirits up. Don't let the enemy 
hoard up sin in your life and hoard up hurts and wounds that surround you that you can't even walk in and breathe in. But you cleanse it. All things natural or physical are governed by the Spirit of God. I'm going to read one scripture here and then we're going to close. Hebrews 11 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. The, God created out of nothing. And, and sometimes you've got to speak to the invisible, to what you can't see, to get to the possible. If you can see it in the spirit, you can walk out in it in the flesh. Trust me. And your life may be, I don't know what you're going through, but you've got to get to the places. I'm not going to listen to the devil anymore. I'm not going to listen to the lies. I'm bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm a kid of the king. And I have a special place in God's heart. So whatever you ask, whenever you pray, believe that you have received it, Amen. and it shall be yours. And it does say this, and i got to bring this up before we close, because it says some of you are praying, but you're not having results. The word in the King James Version says, because you pray amiss, which means you missed the prayer. Amen. You didn't hit the target. Because once you get into the place of walking with the Lord and, and daily having that uh, relationship with Him, your prayers will change. And most of the time when you begin to set that time for prayer, I kind of go by the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy be your name. I want to lift up who God is first. I want to thank Him for my existence. And then God will lay on my heart other people's needs, desires, and wants and circumstances. And then that's the next place I begin to pray. And then in the midst of that prayer, God will bring someone from somewhere that needs prayer that you hadn't thought about. And then you're going to stop and pray for them. And then by the time you get through with all that, you get to your stuff. And it's not important anymore. You ever been there? But sometimes we have to get on our knees and get prostrate before God because of stuff that we're going through. And at that time, that's a long time with God. God can do more in 15 minutes than you can do in 15 years. I know I've got to close. I'm going to close with this. I promise. Have you ever had something like a thorn in the flesh that just aggravates the dickens out of you and you know it makes you sin? And you don't want to sin, but you can't help but sin because your attitude is just like, uh. me and my wife had, had, had bought our house and everything. And when we bought it, it had five and a half acres with it. Had three, or five, I don't know. Anyway, three acres up on the upper part that we didn't own. But the property just came almost right by our bedroom, just right. I mean, that property line. And uh, the guy, uh, they, wanted, they had that property for sale. It was three acres out in Chestnut Grove. They wanted some thousand dollars for it. And we're like, mm, not going to do it. <laughs> Would be prudent, not this juncture. So <laughs> anyway. It would bother me so much. And because I wouldn't buy them, he started parking these tractor trailer trailers, or whatever you call them, you know, the big trailers, right on my line. And I'd get up every morning and look, and all I could see was tractor trailers. And I had all kinds of crazy thoughts. I'm like, you know, about a five gallon bucket of Tannerite would fix that. <laughs> You think crazy things because the enemy wants to get you all up in your flesh. And I thought about, you know, stabbing their tires. Well, he'll like that then, won't he? Let all the air out of them. You think all these evil things you can do. 
But you know if you're a Christian, you really can't do that stuff. So anyway, they move a trailer in, and on the back of it, it says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I want to bring down the fire of Jerusalem on this. It had gotten to the point that it, 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 it was, it was uh, uh, distracting my relationship with God. And everybody else, too, because all I did was complain about it. And I was so, I'd get, make you just so angry. Why would they, how could they do that and stuff like that? Well, it was just the devil. That's all it is, and I knew it. But I told my wife, I said, listen, here, here's the deal. This is, this is driving me nuts. I've got to have closure in it. I've got to get free from this. I said, I'm going into the bedroom, and I may be in there five minutes or five days, but I'm not coming out until God gives me peace. And you know what? I didn't pray for the person that put them there. I didn't pray for God to change their mind. I didn't pray for God to change their heart. I said, God, do a work in me. Amen. Start with me. Yes. They're not the problem. The problem is my heart. There's something inside of me that's not right, and you want to cleanse it. You want to change it. You want my attitude to change and trust me. And I literally got before the Lord. I prayed. It was about 15 minutes, and when it broke, I felt it. You felt that relief. You ever been there when you've been so burdened and then that relief comes, boom. And I felt it. It was, it was like a physical relief because it's like, boom. I knew that God had done his work. And I was a completely peace. I started thanking God for them traitors right there. Kept the wind from coming blowing all over our house and stuff. The Lord tells me just shortly after that, he says, I want you to call them. And see what they'll take for it. Me and my wife had discussed the exact amount that we would be willing to pay for it. There's a lot of other that goes along with the story I don't need to tell. But anyway, uh, I called them up. I said, well, they ain't going to be at home. They work stuff like that. We called them up, and sure enough, they was at home. I said, listen, this is Charles Williams, the neighbors over here. And I said, you know, we've been going around with this uh, uh, land and everything. And it's just not been good. And I said, listen. There ain't nobody else that wants that land but me because it's right beside me. And I want the land. I said, but I'm not going to pay you the 60 some thousand dollars you're asking for. That's just not it. I said, so I'm just asking if you guys would just decide what the bottom dollar you would take for it. Just whatever the bottom dollar is, and you just let us know. And we'll say yes or no, and we'll write you a check. All right? They said, you know, it's funny. We've been talking about that. They hadn't been talking about it, but whenever you get before God in, in, in a time and then the Holy Spirit begins to speak when your words don't do nothing. And that's something for you marriage folks. If what you've been saying to your husband or your wife isn't changing things, the best thing you can do is be quiet and stop talking and let the Holy Spirit do the talking. Because when the Holy Spirit does the talking, the devil does the walking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway long story short gave us the number it was the exact number that me and my wife had agreed upon so what, I know it's a long story to say this no matter what you're going with no matter what your struggle is the enemy wants to take your faith away he wants to take your faith in God away he wants you to doubt God's word that what he says is true and when you stand on his word he is faithful and just To forgive. I needed forgiveness because my heart was, was, was dirty. What I went to hell, and I wasn't going to hell. I just had a problem. But God wants us to lay our burdens down at the foot of Christ. And he'll take it. I don't know what you're dealing with today. I'm still going to continue this message probably for about another four weeks or whatever. But here's what I want you to take home with you. Is that if you don't like what you're getting... If you don't like the life and the way that you're walking, you need to evaluate your talking and see if is it lining up with the Word of God or is it not line up with the Word of God? Does it line up with the world's way or does it line up with God's way? 
My challenge to each and every one of us is the minute we leave here is to take an attitude of praise and thankfulness and choose this day that I'm not going to speak negative about any person, any circumstance, including mine or any situation because I can speak life and life breeds life. Let's pray. Some of you here are just, they're like, man, he hit a home run today. That was on the money. I needed to hear that. Listen, I have to remind myself of it. That life and death is in the power of the tongue. And with the fruit of it, their stomach will be satisfied. And those who eat of it and love it will eat of this fruit forever. Lord, I just pray that right now, no matter what each and every person is dealing with, that you would just impart life into each and every one of them, into their speech, into their attitudes, into their actions, Lord. Lord, you went to the cross so that we might be set free, not to be bound up with anger and frustrations and struggles of the world. We thank you that through the blood of Jesus Christ, you said it was finished. And maybe you're here today and you've never stepped across that line of faith, or maybe you've said a prayer or whatever, but it didn't change anything. The word says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if you're here today and you've never made that uh, step or you're not sure that you've made that step, would you just right now just, close, just focus on God? It says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. There's nothing you can do above that. And the Holy Spirit, I ask you to just touch hearts right now and draw people to you. Would you say this prayer with me right where I said, Dear Lord, thank you for loving me and saving me. I receive you. I'm calling the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want a new life with you and the old life to go away. Thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. And the Lord, may everything in my life be focused on you for your glory. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.